computer and then I'm going to now it'll take a second for us to go live on um on uh, Facebook so I want to make sure that that's okay. on us too so I want to welcome everybody to I gotta to the welcome to the author showcase and it's your boy Leroy McKenzie Jr. coming to you live and we want to ensure that you are tuned in to the Author Showcase, bringing you some dynamic authors with some knowledge, information, and resources that will uh, activate you, elevate you, and, and actually give you, <clears throat> give you that information that's going to make you not only uh, better, but also give you the, give you the information that is going to take you to your next level. So we want to thank you for joining us today. I am here today with our author guest of today, Ms. Charles McMillan. Y'all know I don't do bios, so what we do is we actually go into talking to the authors, let them talk a little bit about themselves, give you a little background on who they are, uh, what they do, and then we get into the conversation about their mission, their message, their movement, and the motivation behind the books that they have. And you can, this is brought to you by the National Black Unity News, a newspaper, and JNF Enterprises. And we're so glad that you can join us. You're able to actually go and subscribe to the newspaper at www.tnbun.com. You can check out other great authors such as Cherish uh, on the YouTube channel, which is under the, if you go on to YouTube, it's under the Black National, the National Black Unity News uh, title. You'll see it there with the great um, gr uh, bright uh, emblem that's there. Click on that and you'll be able to see other authors as well on there giving their great, uh, doing their great showcase. So Miss Cherish, how are you today? I am doing well. I am super excited to be here. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk about my book, help people understand who I am, and also help people with a few tips that we'll give them at the end of this interview on how to focus during this pandemic. Again, mm -hmm. my name is Parrish McMillan. I am a communications professional. I have over a decade of experience. I also have experience in education. I taught middle and high school students, and I do a lot of work in the community to help and support the homeless. You know, I learned through my journey in life that in juggling all of these different things that we do in life, it's extremely important to focus on what you want to do. You do so many things for other people, but I want to help you to live out your purpose in life and be intentional about the decisions that you make and extremely focused in doing so. So thank you so much, Leroy. Josh, thank you for joining us. And I really appreciate you, you coming and, and being a part of the Author Showcase uh, because you and I have talked before. And, and I believe that the message that you have and just, just your all around um, person and personality that you have is, is so, um, it's so energetic. It, it's so um, uh, encompassing to people where you can't help but feel you be brought in by your energy because of the energy that you that you bring to people and your passion for wanting to assist others. And I tell you one thing, and you said something about that, about what we're doing today uh, and about what you do, helping people to focus. Um, my, my theme for this week for myself, <laughs> which I've done, is to, mm -hmm. is to see how I can assist people more this week. My focus has been, what am I doing this week that's assisting people to be able to be better, do better? So you are a part of that. By doing this, this is, this is one of those things that's, that's getting done, uh, that's able to assist people to be better. Um, all of my themes and the different things that folks know that I do um, on a daily basis, the motiv motivational stuff and everything like that, is about assisting people um, and how, how we can, how when we assist people, we increase their value, we increase their skill sets, we increase who they are as, as people. So I thank you for, for doing that to, uh, and being a part of that today, though, too. So I think it's, it's just awesome. So thank you for joining us. So. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so absolutely. I actually had a focus moment right uh -huh. before 
before we started this interview today. Okay, okay. And I kind of gave an introduction to making sure that we're focusing on what's important. Well, you know, I really wanted to come on here and just look glamorous and amazing for you all today. <laughs> and I had a total makeup disaster, uh -oh. literally minutes before I got on the camera with Leroy today. And I had to pause, take a breather, and use my own principles on myself and think, what does success really mean to me? Okay, so I need to successfully get on camera on time so that I can successfully give my people the information that they need in order to be successful. And one of the things that I discuss in my book, in this principle specifically, is understanding that sometimes failure is success and accepting that failure is a success and so i successfully accepted my makeup failure today <laughs> i washed my face and came on air and i said you know what this eyeliner is gonna have to do it today this is it because it's time to go and i had to take this opportunity which is another principle, shameless plug there, to come and speak to you all. And so me having my whole face beat was not worth being unsuccessful in taking this opportunity to help you all understand in a very practical way how to understand <laughs> and know how to stay focused in all things, even when it's as small as a makeup disaster. <laughs> now, let me tell you, first of all, you look great. So so the, the the makeup is not even wasn't even necessary see and that's probably why that happened because you didn't need to have the makeup and the, okay. oh, like you said all you needed was the eyeliner to be able to make it happen so okay, go on. <laughs> yes <laughs> that's a lesson right there i'm gonna take that i'm gonna put that in my pocket watch this recording later <laughs> so let, let's let's start with this what what got you started writing and then we'll get into the the um the book so what, what, okay, got you, what made you want to want to start writing? Well, I always kind of had this idea that I wanted to inspire people through my voice. Okay, so okay. I've always wanted to be an inspirational speaker. I've always loved public speaking, and I was always that kid in class that got super duper excited when it was time to do an oral presentation. This excitement that you're hearing right now literally was me in the classroom, and everyone else was just like, ugh. Golly. <laughs> and so I kind of went on this path um, that kind of intertwines into some of my principles, but I was originally on this path to be a reporter because I felt that that would be a way to give me a voice and a platform. And then I realized that, you know, this isn't really allowing me to inspire people. It's helping me to be able to educate people about what's going on, but I want to inspire them. And I really wasn't allotted the opportunity and wiggle room, per se, to do that as a reporter. And so I kind of sat down uh, at my previous job. Uh, I was a social media and web administrator. Okay. And I earned a certification in social media marketing strategy from the University of Delaware, where I met Miss Gay Lynch. Miss Gay Lynch kind of sat down with me. They had, they gave us opportunities to meet with people to give us advice to use and apply in our social media postings and activity. And she met with me and simply asked me, what is your dream? And I explained to her that I want to use my voice to inspire people around the world. And she said, you know what? I believe you can do that. Now, Ooh. you do need to have something so that people can have a reference when you're not speaking to them. I believe you can write a book. You have, Ooh. you were an English major in college. You speak very well. I've seen your writing in simple forms of communications like emails and text messages. So I know you're completely capable of doing this. What have you done in your life? So I started kind of going through this list of things that I was going through. And she's like, okay, what do you want your topic to be for your book? Now, this conversation took place in Panera Bread <laughs> while I was eating a Mediterranean veggie sandwich with no cheese. And I remember very vividly, and I had my green tea with no ice. And I said to Miss Gay Lynch, 
you know, I don't know because I'm not, you know, in a position where I'm not a pastor and so I'm not going to write something on theology. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I've seen a lot of people write books about, you know, how to recover from addiction and I didn't have those things. I've also seen relationship advice books and, you know, I wasn't married at the time. And so I'm kind of like, I don't know that I have something to talk to the people about. I just want to inspire them to do better. I've always been a big cheerleader. I literally was a cheerleader. And so I'm like, I want to cheer people on in life. And she said, you know, you've accomplished a lot of things. And I said, okay. You know, you, when someone else on the outside sees what you've done, sometimes they see more than you do, okay? Absolutely. And so I didn't really think much of what I was doing. Like, okay, I went to school. I got the degree. You know, I ran a half a marathon and I ran a full marathon. I completed both and things like that. And she said, you know, you have successfully completed a lot of things. I think you need to write a book on how people can successfully complete things. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, okay. And she said, go on ahead and ponder on that. So I went and pondered on it. I came back to her with some ideas and I said, you know, I noticed something as I was sitting and pondering and praying. As I was going through these times of accomplishments, I noticed that people got really excited in the beginning and celebrated when I started doing something and kind of pumped me up. And then at the end, there was a big celebration and a big party. I like to have a good time, so I like that part. (laughs) But then as I was the envy part, the dash, right? You know, you have a gravestone, okay? It says, when you were born, dash, when you go and have your sunset and when you die, right? Mm-hmm. So the dash, it got kind of quiet for the dash. The in-between portion, the journey is what I'm talking about here. Mm. So I noticed that there was a lot of quiet during the journey. And I said, that's the part I need to talk about. Mm. That's where I need to inspire people. And so she realized what I was talking about. She understood it. We moved forward and she said, okay, now you need to go start speaking to people. But when you speak to people, you need to give them a clear strategy, something that's easy to remember. Mm. And she said, you need to come up with an acronym so that they can remember it and be able to apply it. So I'm like, okay. So I just sat there for like weeks trying to figure out an acronym (laughs) And then I was like, okay, so what are some things that I did along the journey while I was, you know, moving forward to succeed in these things that I accomplished, whether it be educational or fitness wise or anything like that. And so that's kind of how I came up with my five principles for focus. Um, The F stands for fun. The O stands for opportunity. The C stands for concentration. U stands for unwavering and S stands for success. And so then I just started writing and I got connected with Leroy. Hey, Leroy, (laughs) from one of my sisters at church who had also produced the book and is successfully moving forward on her journey. And then, you know, once I connected with Leroy, that gave me accountability and wisdom as I moved forward and successfully completing my book. So that, 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 and that's an awesome story. And the, the backstory behind that shows that, that when you do take the time to, you know, just to think about things and they say, we all have a story within us. And, and I think the only difference is, is, is who chooses to move forward with telling their story or telling um, their, their message that they, that they may have. So uh, I think that's great. Now let's, <clears throat> let's talk about this. How does one, uh, in this in this climate that we're in, uh, the shift is what I call it because we're in a mm. shift right now with with this pandemic that we're dealing with and the coronavirus and everything. How does one uh, begin to focus uh, in the environment that we're in right now? How can because you just gave the acronym and I and give the acronym one more time so that people know what it stands for because we're not gonna go into the full book because we want people to to go and get the book so that they can begin to. Uh, to, that they can that they can begin to get their focus and they can be able to do what it is that they need to do. But but in this environment, what are just just give them just give them uh, how to, how they can begin to focus. What are so you know what are your your one or two things that they can begin with in order to be able to do that? 
Okay, so I am going to review the acronym one more mm -hmm. time. Um, I am one of those people that believes that repetition helps things stick. I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier that I do have a little bit of a background in education, and so I support <laughs> that. So my acronym is FOCUS. The F stands for fun. O stands for opportunity. C stands for concentration. U stands for unwavering. And S stands for success. So a few things that I have done in order to try to focus during this shift is to accept that it is in fact a shift. Mm. Things are changing. I had to actually accept that there are going to be some things that are not going to be done the way that I'm used to them being done. And so I had to accept that a shift was happening, but guess what? I had to accept that I had to shift. Mm. And so, mm. you know, although you do want to make sure that you're being unwavering in your journey and your goals and your foundation, mm. this is in fact an opportunity to grow and learn some different things, not only about what you are dreaming about and what your goal is, but this is also an opportunity to learn about yourself. So that is one thing that I've been doing to make sure that I am in fact staying focused in this climate. And one more thing that I've been doing to make sure that I stay focused in this climate is to make sure that I have accountability. Mm. I have been making sure that I am staying connected with friends and family members who know what I'm trying to do, who know me personally, so they can understand, okay, she's having a down moment and I need to kind of pick her up to help her to have the energy and the drive and light her flame again so that she can in fact continue to be a focused trainer. Now, um, when I work out, sometimes I go outside and I jog or I run or I do like intervals and sometimes it allows me to go and run for a period. I'll stop and do some strength training, maybe like push-ups and planks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I was doing one of the Nike run at guided runs and Kevin oh. Hart leading the run and it was com it was hilarious um and so this is a shameless plug for my fun principle you do want to have fun on the way mm. but one thing that i noticed from the coach who was also leading the workout along with kevin hart um he said that it's important for the person who is being trained to help the trainer know what they need Okay, and wow. so me being the focused trainer, sometimes I need my trainer to come along and help me stay on track and help me to know what I need to do to stay focused so I can know what to do to help you stay focused. And mm. I can do that as your focused trainer. There is a sprinkle of therapy that comes in with training. And I'm also providing that for you as well. Oh, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Now, what's the, what's the message that you want the reader to come away with when when the person closes that book um and and they finish if they read the the last line or whatever from the book what is it that you want them to come away with from from uh, from from the book i want them to come away knowing that success looks different in every situation for every person but it is in fact attainable if you focus mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Say that one more time for me. Success looks different for every person in every situation, mm -hmm. but it is in fact attainable if you focus. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. So you just started that. Now we're not going <laughs> to give them all, we're not going to give them all five because the, the title of the book is Focus mm -hmm. Five Principles to Success. Um, give them a couple of principles that they um, that they can use um, right now that okay. will enable them to to kind of I know we gave them a, a beginning thing or whatever but get to give them a couple of principles that they say hey cherish I'm, I want to be able to focus starting today you know give me a couple of principles that I could keys that I can that I can use to better start today Okay, so I'm gonna go back to what I was saying with Kevin Hart. So, okay, okay. You know, that whole saying with laughter being, you know, mm. the best medicine. Mm -hmm. I need you to 
figure out how to have some fun in the middle of all this madness, okay? Because <laughs> if you are not able to smile and have some kind of joy, it's going to be extremely challenging mm. and super duper hard for you to focus on Absolutely. anything. So I need you to make sure that you're getting those endorphins flowing mm. and get moving and have fun in your movement, whether that's dancing, running, lifting weights, or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But I do need you to make sure that you are figuring out what makes you happy and doing that. And mm. some people, fun can just be reading. Maybe it's just kind of doing your nails. Um, maybe for my fellas, it's just kind of hanging out and talking to your boys on a, on a Zoom chat because you may be feeling some kind of way because the sports are not on right now. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I'm just saying y'all may need to have your own therapy session and crack some jokes and stuff. I so, need my NBA uh, back right now. <laughs> see, this is what I'm talking about. See, so you need to talk to your boys and stuff so y'all can have some fun conversations so you can focus, Leroy. Um, another thing that I would definitely make sure that I'm doing during this time is concentrating on things that are important, okay? Mm. Because this shift kind of forces us yeah. to shift our value system, wow. shift what we see as a priority. Mm. So I want you to make sure that if you don't take anything else away from this conversation, and I like to talk a lot, and so there's a lot of content there, but if you don't do anything else and you're trying to start your journey to success today, I need you to go on ahead and have fun and concentrate, have fun doing something that makes you happy and concentrate on what's important. Mm, and I like that. And, and just to give you an example, um, I was watching the movie and I don't know if you've, if you've watched it or heard of it, but it's a movie called um, um, The Overcomer or called Overcomer. And the story, the movie is about this young girl uh, she's in high school and she's one of those quiet, shy young girls. Um, but she has this, she has this, uh, she has a family that is dysfunctional, uh, oh. and everything. Um, but she, and she, um, so she's in school and the, um, the story is about her wanting to run track. Now the, um, the track coach was the basketball coach and the only way that he could he could remain on the on in the school was to become the track coach. So because they had gotten rid of the, the basketball program. It's a great movie, but the um they he becomes a coach. She's the only one on the track team. She she's the only one that shows up for the track team, <laughs> only one on the track team, and she runs cross, cross country. He so the story is about her training and her becoming this track runner. Mind you, she's a track runner and she has asthma. <laughs> yeah, that that's the movie Overcoming. But the, the, the movie is about her overcoming. And the storyline is she, um, the, the track coach goes to the hospital for some, I forgot what he went to the hospital, but he winds up meeting this guy in the hot that's in the hospital. And the guy in the hospital turns out to be her father, who she had not, did not even know existed because she was told um, she was told that I think that he'd gone away or whatever and something like that, but she didn't believe that he was alive or around, but they wow. find out that he's alive. And the crazy thing is he used to run track. So the guy, but the track coach finds out about all of this and he's training the young lady to run this race and they get up to it. I'm going to speed fast forward this, but the, at the, towards the end of the movie, she's running in this, um, in this, um, net in this, uh, uh, I want to say state, it was a state competition, state mm -hmm. um, cross country race. So yeah. she, she's running against, you know, all of these other uh, teams and stuff like that and other uh, runners and stuff. But what the track coach did, he had been coaching her all along. He knows the course that they're going to be running. What he did was he, he took the course and the father's blind now because he has diabetes and whatever and stuff like that. So he couldn't yeah. see, but he takes the, the, the course and explains the course to the father. And he records the father telling her how to run the race, where wow. she's at at certain points in the race, what she needed to do at certain points, how to be able to, you know, to, um, to get and, and win the race and everything. Like, great movie. But, um, so, but he, she, he doesn't give her the recording until she's getting ready to run the race. 
So she goes to run the race and the voice that she hears, because she you're able to wear the little um recorder things, is she hears her father. And he's coaching her the whole way through the race. So she's not even thinking about the race. All she's doing is focusing on him. Oh and it, it is such a, I mean, if you get a chance to watch that movie, it is one of the best movies I've ever watched. You want to talk about an inspiring movie. You want to talk about being focused and everything like that. That, that really does because she becomes focused on, she doesn't become focused on the runners. She doesn't become focused, focused on the course. She's only focusing on his voice, telling her what she needs to do at what section, at what point she is at the race, what she needs to do, when she needs to exert energy, when she needs to do this and do that. Having that physical coach, like you were talking about a little bit ago, yeah, yeah. having that through the whole, through the whole race and be able to get her. And, and she, she, <laughs> I don't tell the story, but you gotta watch. You gotta watch it to find out whether or not she wins. I'm not gonna tell y'all whether or not she wins. Oh, but, teaser! But the, <laughs> but the movie's you called Overcome. Helped you helped me kind of get myself together because I was over here about to cry and stuff <laughs> because I was like, "No, the Lord's speaking to me," <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm really about to start crying. Like, no, I'm serious, y'all. My tears are welling up right here, and I'm trying to compose myself because that hit me. And it's yeah. funny how God comes in the conversation that way. And he interjected himself. I actually asked him to interject himself in this conversation before it started. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for doing that. I'm trying now. I'm, you know, everybody praises different ways, just like success looks different for everybody. So sometimes I'm a little crying praiser. So I'm going ahead and reel myself in here as best I can. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, but it's so true. Like I said, but being focused, it does take that. You do have to have fun, like you talked about. And the I think the the fun part for her was actually hearing her father, who she didn't even know before that point, actually coaching her through this whole race. It just gave, I mean, you can't even imagine, can you imagine just the energy that, that energy boost that she got just from listening to that, to run that race. You couldn't have, you couldn't have told her nothing after oh she, she started hearing his voice and everything through that, uh, through, throughout that race and everything like that. So it, it, it's a phenomenal uh, movie. So if you get a chance to, to watch it, I, I suggest everybody to go watch it. Um, yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit about the the book. What how explain how was your writing experience, or what did your writing experience teach you about being an author? This this process. What did it, what has it taught you about being an author? Oh my goodness! So this <laughs> is a major question. Let me tell you. First of all, this book has been in the making for like half a decade. Not even joking. Like almost five years, and this is because. I believe God wanted me to go through everything that you all are going to go through and face on your journey to success so that I can be a successful focus trainer, so that I could be effective in training you to focus on your journey to success. So mm -hmm. I started the book about five years ago or so, and along the way, there were many trials and tribulations, and there were many stumbling blocks along the way, and there were many moments where I was not sure if this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. having that accountability, people like Leroy, and being connected to the person who kind of launched me and started me off, Miss Gay Lynch, and having them walk beside me and stay patient with me mm -hmm. that really showed me that you know this thing can't be done alone at all there's no way I would have gotten that done alone like you know of course I'm you know shout out to God because you know he's the one that orchestrated this whole deal and put all these people in place but I had to submit and understand that I could not do this by myself I believe that this journey if nothing else it has taught me the importance of surrounding yourself with people who truly care about your success and your well-being mentally, physically, and spiritually as you're moving along in the journey, which is ironic because this book focuses on the journey to success. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, what advice would you give someone uh, who doesn't think that they can focus and accomplish what they need to accomplish? 
That's a great question. So the advice that I would give to someone who is trying to focus, not even just now, but even after all of this is over, mm -hmm. is to make sure that, like I was saying earlier, that you are connected to someone who can help you figure out how to focus. Mm -hmm. You need an accountability partner, mm -hmm. for sure. If you have an accountability team, that's great. But I find having an accountability partner and some friends mm -hmm. and some family members who know what you're trying to do, that just kind of check in with you every now and then say, hey, how's that coming along? <laughs> you know, it kind of forces you to refocus mm -hmm. yourself. That's a shameless plug for something to look forward to in the future. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> but that is an opportunity for you to refocus on what you need to stay focused on. It helps you to concentrate on what is necessary in your journey to success. Because when you're left to yourself, let's mm -hmm. not, okay, let's not even play these games. Okay. Some of us are trying to stay physically active right. during this pandemic. Right. When you're working out by yourself, it's totally different than when you're in class or with your trainer. And don't try to tell me it's something different because it's not. <laughs> and so <laughs> when I'm working out and I'm looking at Fitness Blender and I'm doing their workouts or I'm outside, I'm doing my run with the Nike app, it's super duper easy for me to slack off and get mm -hmm. this. You have to get yourself up to get moving these days because it's all on you and you can easily go, I don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. So, and then you may not have somebody there to say, hey, did you get your workout in today? Or how'd your workout go today? One of my friends did that to me and like, it made me feel so crappy that <laughs> I got up and immediately did my workout mm -hmm. and I did it pretty hard. Cause I was like, okay, you know, now like people are checking in on me. I'm being held accountable mm -hmm. for my actions. I'm being watched and it's important to know that so yeah. i have to stay on track because people are watching i'm the focus trainer i have to be able to train you to focus so i'm training <laughs> myself to focus also i don't want anyone to have the idea that because i'm the focus trainer i don't know what it's like to struggle with focus that's why i'm such a good trainer because i understand what you're feeling i understand what you're going through and i can meet you where you are yeah, absolutely. And I think that's important, too, because uh, when when we're transparent and whether it's a book or whether it's just in our, in our, in our um, speaking, you know, when we're telling uh, people about the things that um, that we're trying to get them to understand and to be, when you, one of my, um, uh, at church, uh, we go through a discipleship program and I went through my discipleship program our uh, teacher, our person that was, was our, our coach, so to speak, or our trainer, um, I call him captain, he used to always tell us, make it personal. Make, the, make what, you, what we talked about, make what, you were, what we're trying to relate, what we're trying to do, make it personal. What story do you have from you within your life that you can think about that is applicable to what it is that you're trying to get across to, to people? So I've, yeah. I've, I've done that. Um, and things that I'm trying to do, especially when I'm speaking, I've applied that to that because it, it makes it easier for people to relate to it when they, when they see that, hey, wow, I'm not just telling you something that, you know, that I'm speaking about. This is something that I've gone through. This is something that I know. This is something that I've experienced that I see what it is. You know, I know what it is to go through this. Like you talked about, you know what it is to have fun. You know what it is to have a, to make to create opportunities. You know what it yeah. is to, to have to focus and concentrate. All yes. of those things you had to go through, so you can walk people through those things. Yes. You know? So it's important that we, you know, that we do be transparent. We can't say, "Oh, well, I can't talk about that and this, that, and the other." No. No. You no. want to talk about it? <laughs> you want to talk <laughs> about it because it frees other people to understand and to see that wow, I'm not the only one. Because I've said yeah. this before, that er so many people think that they're the only ones going through something. And, and when we talk about we've gone through something and we show people that transparency, they see, wow, you give them permission to go through it and to assist them to be able to go yes. through it. Because they say, wow, well, if this person can come on the other side of it, then, you know, then I can do it too. And that's, you know, one of the things when we're going through this, you know, the, this pandemic that we're in and having to be in a house. This is something that we're all going through together. And it's yes. important for those of us like you that, that 
assist people in order to be able to get through things to understand, hey, we're going to get to the other side of it. And he, yeah. but here's how you get to the other side of it by doing certain things. And if yes. you're doing certain things along the way, by the time you know it or before you even know it, hey, we're on the other side of this thing. You'd be like, well, don't. I didn't, I didn't already, like you said, I didn't already ran my half marathon or I didn't already ran my marathon because I'm, I'm focused on those yes. things that I need to be doing. So I think that's, um, I think that's great. I think that's awesome. So um, what, what's, what's next with, with Cherish? Well, Cherish is getting ready. To, yes, I'm talking in third person if anybody has a problem with it. <laughs> You know what? I'm having fun. So I'm using my own principle right now. So next, you are going to see a course where I am going to digitally teach you and instruct you and guide you through all five of my principles. So I do want you to be on the lookout for that. Because while we're at home, we're going to go on ahead and focus on what's important. And that is making sure that we fulfill our dreams and our goals and become the best person that we can be. Absolutely, absolutely. So how can how can people um, purchase the book and then how can they also connect with you uh, to hire you as their 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 focus trainer? Well, I want and you all come to and speak as well too. All right, so I want you all to come and visit my website at www.cherishmcmillan.com. Again, that is www.cherishmcmillan. Dot com, And that's where you're going to find all the information that's necessary to get in touch with me, to learn a little bit more about me, to learn about my journey in creating this book so I can come out and speak with you and train you in your focus journey and anything else that may be non-traditional or that is not mentioned that is connected to your journey to success. If you want to connect with me about that, or if you have a question about today's conversation, you can get in touch with me on my website. Now, do me a favor, spell spell your name because you know how folks are. <laughs> we want oh, to no, sure no, no, it's it not out. even creative over here. Look, they kept it real simple. My <laughs> parents were like, look, we're going to go with the dictionary spelling. So if you need a mnemonic device, you can sing a song to me. It's okay. Um, if you, <laughs> you can put it in a sentence, but it's cherish. C H E R I S H McMillan is M C M I L L A N M C M I L L A N. So cherish McMillan.com. Yeah, and that to me that is so important because you have people that that have so many kind of ways that they spell stuff. So I always think it's important that people understand, you know, whether it's somebody's name or any, whenever you're giving your website, if it's something, it's just as simple as spelling it out so that people can understand where they go. Because when they put it in, they may put it in all kinds of different kinds of ways if they don't know exactly how to spell it. So um, that's, I think that's awesome. Uh, you are and awesome. I use Sharon. one of my accountability partners. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to. I want to thank you. This has been fun. <laughs> this has been fun. Thank you. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for um, enlightening, empowering, and impacting people um, with this, bringing not just the book, but the energy that you bring in this, inter this interview, the, the nuggets uh, that, you, that you gave in this interview, the information that you weren't afraid to share, the knowledge that you gave to people, uh, because this is something that, as I've told you, this is something that people need right now. People yes. need to be able to know how to focus, how to be able to be uh, set the um, set their um, have be structured, and how yeah. to be able to navigate through what we're going through right now because there's so many people who don't know and don't understand how to get through this. So they need people like you who are there to be able to assist them to be able to get through all of this. And, and not just to get through it, but to understand that they can get through it. Because yes. a lot of people don't believe that they can get through it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I thank you for, for coming on. I thank you for being a part of the Author Showcase. It's, it's been a joy. It's been a pleasure. So you all, I want to thank you all for tuning in at, uh, our Facebook Live folks. You all can check out the, um, the National Black Unity News newspaper. Please go to the website. You can subscribe there, get the latest issue that has our Author Showcase page, which has Miss Cherish's book on there as well. 
uh, and then you can also go over to the YouTube channel and the other, uh, the Facebook page as well, the National Black Unity News uh, page, and you can see all of the other authors that, are, that we have highlighted there, but you can go over to the YouTube channel and see other inter interviews that we have that of the other authors that have been showcased on this. These interviews have just, they've inspired me. And, and when I first started doing these, um, I had an, you know, you have an idea of how you want things to go and you think that they should look, but this is far exceeded my expectation of, of what I was looking for. Having uh, people and individuals come on such as Cherish, who are just a delight and, and have a, a message uh, and a mission behind what they do that is motivating and, and, and there's actually a movement. So I, I just appreciate you. I thank you for coming in and being a part of this. I can't say it enough. And we want to thank y'all for tuning in. You all can tune in to the next author showcase that we'll have that will be going on shortly where we'll have another author from the, um, our second issue that we'll be highlighting. And once again, Cherish, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. And we will talk to you all next time. Yeah.